and moving on to technical side that is uh, uh, we will discuss about what we are going to cover in our training program and this is iot end to end architecture here there are four stages uh, and there is no hard and fast rule defined for this iot application architecture because some may define it as three stage flow some may define it as five stage one some may define it as four stage one and this four stage architecture is generic one uh, this is the uh, architecture used in most of the iot applications so here stage one is sensors are activators that is our iot sensor system with the sensors we are going to sense uh, information from the environment and after that we have to process this information for this we are going to use uh, internet gateways or data acquisition systems data acquisition systems uh, are nothing but the systems which could aggregate data they they would take care of that uh, conversions measurements control and all the, all those stuff uh, the most of the data coming from the sensors will be in analog form. You need to convert into digital form and after that you need to aggregate it. So all that stuff is going to uh, be done here in the stage two. And after that, the stage three is about edge IT, analytics or pre-processing. Here your data is some more processed before going to cloud. And why? because uh, most of the iot applications would be real time applications right you can't uh, wait uh, you can send your data to cloud and wait for a response if your iot application is connected with a robot performing a surgery or if your iot application uh, is related to driverless car you can't wait for the response coming from the cloud you need a quick response that happens in fraction of seconds. In such scenarios, your data should be processed and analyzed at the edge itself, at the device itself. Uh, in such scenarios, we perform analytics at the edge itself. And we call that thing as edge analytics, edge computing or edge computing or edge analytics. And stage four, and if you want to uh look deeper into your data and extract uh, a really valuable and useful insights out of it you need to send your data to cloud where uh, analytics happens cloud also offers and storage platform to your data because most of of your of your iot devices are battery operated and they don't have uh, right protocols to process the data and they have limitations on their uh, storage and processing speeds so cloud offers all those uh, computing analytics and storage for your iot application right and let us briefly discuss about uh, these stages starting with stage one that is our iot endpoint which is embedded with the sensors and actuators and actuators are the devices uh, which, uh, are re which are responsible for the physical action. Suppose your IoT application is a home automation system. And you are uh, shutting down or opening uh, your door with your mobile phone. Then their actuator is a motor uh, fitted to the door, which is responsible for the actual action, right? Uh, it follows the instructions coming from your mobile phone to close or open, and it actually does that physical action. And the device which is uh, responsible for that physical action, actual physical action is activated. In this example, motor is activated. And uh, most of the IoT devices consist both the sensors and actuators at the device itself. I already had said this uh, boiler example. In a chemical factory, uh, there would be a boiler and a sensor is fitted to this boiler. A, a, some smart device is set to this boiler, which senses the temperature and also shut down the boiler when it reaches this threshold value. 
right and uh, moving on to uh, stage 1 that is iot endpoints and each iot endpoint should consist all of this capabilities you can call this iot uh, application as system of systems your iot endpoint itself is a system which has sub components and your uh, iot endpoint should be capable of sensing that is to sense uh, information from the environment and after that it it should be able to process that uh, data for this you need a computer that is a computing platform and actuators which does that physical job and communication communication means your iot endpoint should have this communication interfaces up to this part uh, we call our device as an embedded system if your device has an computer any device uh, which has computer embedded in it we call such devices as embedded systems the moment this fourth capability come in, comes into the picture your embedded system becomes an iot endpoint all the iot endpoints are embedded systems but not all the embedded systems are iot endpoints right and we will start off with this first quality that is sensing sensing means you need a sensors and there are wide variety of sensors available in the market as many parameters as many sensors are there and this uh, ranges from a dumb sensor to an a uh, very intelligent sensor which could process the information collected uh, from the environment also and based on your iot application you should choose the sensor and what this sensor does is uh, it converts that actual physical signal into electrical signal uh, whatever the parameter uh, consider a temperature sensor uh it gives the temperature in the form of an analog signal analog electrical signal right and there are uh, hundreds and thousands of sensor it's very important to choose the right sensor to your iot application and moving on to the next capability here that is computing computing means uh computing is a job does by computer right and what is a computer here computer means not our regular computer which has this keyboard mouse uh, monitor all this stuff here i am referring to the computer that is located in this box which contains all this stuff on it a microprocessor ram rom and some ic's which makes uh, this input and output ports this is the actual computer and the microprocessor which is capable of executing your program the instructions you are giving is the actual cpu uh, of your computer and the technical definition of this computer is the device which could execute set of programmable instructions and can respond to the new ones given to it right technically speaking any device which can execute a program becomes a computer right and to do that job it needs a microprocessor ram rom and some io ports that is your computer and thanks to this real estate technology they have bought all this stuff microprocessor ram rom some some uh, io ports ICs which makes IO ports into a single chips called microcontroller. These are the computers I am talking about. So our IoT application is going to have a sensor through which it senses the environment, and after that it's going to compute through these microcontrollers, which are fitted into those uh, devices, right? And this is the microcontroller. and coming to this microcontrollers programming this microcontrollers uh, should be a notorious thing that to uh, for a guy who doesn't have an electronic background 
so what organizations does is they had manufactured this prototyping boards and with the evolution of this iot uh, this knowledge of this uh, electronics has become mandatory right and to uh, make the software developers job uh, flexible and easy organizations like audino have developed some prototyping boards and they have also uh, released some software called as ide integrated development environment to program this microcontroller what they have done is they have fixed this microcontroller on the board and they have arranged all other peripherals uh, that makes our job easy to communicate with this microcontroller and these are different microcontroller uh, sorry prototyping boards coming from this arduino family and this is the one we are going to use in our training program we are going to perform our hands on exercises on this arduino mega 2568 and after that these are the other hardware we are going to work with uh, arduino as i already have mentioned uh, this is a microcontroller fitted over here we are going to work with this microcontroller using this arduino board and arduino ide and this is node mcu and another development board we will talk about it as we move along and this is hc05 bluetooth module and these two are sensors this one is temperature sensor and this one is obstacle detector ir proximity sensor which detects obstacles and this is an um, another module wifi module coming from esp8266 family and this is raspberry pi right so when i am discussing here this architecture i say edge analytics edge it right and where this edge analytics happen edge analytics happens at gateway gateway uh, is a more powerful computer than this microcontroller it can host an operating system it is already uh, have this bluetooth and wifi capabilities and uh, it can have uh, it has some more processing abilities when compared to this single chip so we are going to use this uh, gateway for storage purpose uh, to perform edge analytics to pre process your data and all so we are going to use this raspberry pi as an iot gate right and what is this raspberry pi and how it is different from this board right so, uh, both of them appears to be same uh, all those electronic stuff and all the difference between uh, both of them is here this arduino is an board based on this single chip and this is microcontroller can host a single application and that application is the program you are uploading into this microcontroller and coming to raspberry pi the things are a bit different here it's like your regular computer just connect a keyboard mouse monitor this raspberry pi works as your regular computer and it runs on linux operating system called debian right and we are going to use this raspberry pi as an iot gate and coming to communication technologies uh, there are uh, many communication technologies right uh, right from short range long range wireless wired we are going to discuss about all of those communication protocols and prevalent communication technologies when uh, if you are in your home automation systems you don't need a long range uh, communication technology a bluetooth or zigbee is enough to communicate uh, between between your appliances when if you have to control your iot device remotely then you need an internet you have to use this wifi right we are going to discuss about all of this communication technologies and communication protocols and all and this is tcp ip protocol which is the backbone of our today's internet 
and here uh, this table uh, shows the changes happening in this uh, TCP IP stack. So all those uh, uh, protocols uh, are replaced by some other protocols which are IoT friendly. We will talk about all of these things uh, when we are into this training program. And this is our course agenda. We will start from here with the sensors and the development board that is Arduino board. Uh, we would create an IoT device. And after that, we are going to generate data and we are going to share that data to cloud. In this process, we are going to encounter many architectures, network architectures, device architectures, application uh, level uh, layer architectures, and client server and publish subscribe. These two are the uh, architectures we are going to uh, discuss in detail. And coming to communication protocols, we will start from wired, UART uh, communication model. And we will discuss in detail about other communication models also like Bluetooth, Zigbee, six low pad, Wi-Fi. And there are some other uh, uh, technologies like uh, LoRa, Sigwalks, which are not so prevalent, but we will discuss them in this uh, training. And uh, we will discuss about network protocols, application layer protocols. We will talk about HTTP, MQTT, CoAP. These are the uh, communication protocols, MQTT, co-app, uh, other communication, IoT friendly communication layer protocols, application layer protocols. And uh, we will discuss in detail about cloud architecture. And uh, uh, finally, we will conclude by discussing the challenges we are facing. That is the main challenges facing by this IoT technologies about security and privacy. Right. And what you will learn here is uh, you will learn to uh, create an IoT edge point. You would learn to interface a sensor and how to program it and how to program an IoT edge point. And after that, how to connect your IoT edge point to IoT gateway and how to communicate the data from that IoT gateway to cloud. Right, and uh, uh, this is a picture that explains you how uh, things happen in IoT. So why you are collecting the data from environment and why you are sharing that to cloud to analyze it and how you are going to analyze it by using analytical tools like uh, business intelligent tools to visualize your data uh, or machine learning algorithms or artificial intelligence algorithms, right? So what we are going to learn here is from here to here to sense data from environment to process it and communicating that uh, data to cloud. Up to here, we are going to discuss in detail in this training program and coming to cloud. Uh, most of our hands on exercises would be on ThinkSpeak Cloud. It's an open source cloud platform. Uh, it's a basic one and as a beginner, it's good to start with ThinkSpeak and also we are going to uh, do a couple of experiments on a bigger cloud platform called Azure, right? And AWS, Google or other leading clouds in the market. We are going to explore these two clouds, ThinkSpeak and Azure. And the programming language we are going to use is Python. To program this IoT gateway, we are going to use this uh, Python. And we are also providing uh, one session as a uh, Python crash course. Right, and at device level, we are going to use an Arduino language to program our devices. That is our IoT edge. Uh, right, uh, any doubts up to this point?